Hi, my name is Tom Coopland, uh, and I'm here today to talk you through our new GA Cloud product that we're making available from Red Panda. A little bit more about me. Uh, I live in the southwest of England. Uh, Red Pandas are found all over the world, it seems. I'm actually roughly the size of a fully grown giant panda, not the smaller red variety. Uh, I have been working in software for, I dread to think, uh, maybe 14 longer years. Uh, developing systems, managing systems, uh, working all across the stack. Uh, and to relax, I'm very keen on running around uh, in the dark in the rain. Uh, that's me. But mainly I'm here to talk to you about Red Panda Cloud. Uh, we've been working really hard on this release this year, uh, putting in a lot of new tools for you to use and enjoy. And it's time now to uh, let you see it. Red Panda Cloud is... Um, it's quite unique. It brings a lot of new features along. Uh, we this is one. Of, this is a fully zero operations from your part product. So you can and there, there's a spectrum there really. You can you can leave it all up to us uh, and have no involvement at all, and we'll just manage your cluster for you, and you can use it, uh, sending and receiving messages at will, uh, or you can for extra security bring your own cloud and have the whole database running on your hardware and in your accounts uh, secured as you wish. Uh, both are fully managed by us. It's just about the data locality that you can control. Of course, the secret, real secret source in Red Panda Cloud is Red Panda. So it's you get the performance advantages that come with the product. Um, and then layered on top of that is the Red Panda console which we'll be having a dedicated session on later uh, today. And that works seamlessly, as I'll be showing you shortly, in with uh, the control plane actions that you can use to create your cloud uh, instances of Red Panda. Alongside that, we have fully managed connectors that are similarly made available, all embedded in the same UI. Uh, and then using the, uh, the tools that Alex uh, was speaking about earlier, we have that infinite data retention by offloading data into the cloud provider's blob storage. Uh, and this, again, all just comes through a few clicks, which I'll lead us through in a minute. Uh, and really, you have all your cloud networking and all the security tooling available to you in your own when you bring your own cloud. And of course, we have all of that stuff set up when we when in dedicated mode, which we manage for you and secure on your behalf. And then in terms of upgrades and monitoring, it's very easy again we will be pushing upgrades out to your instances we'll be handling the monitoring of them uh, and controlling and making sure that you get the health of your systems that you uh, that you want we're going to dive a little bit more into what makes this all come to life so this is a bit of a bit of one of those unreadable architectural diagrams that i'm sure you're all familiar with and uh, it's where i classically say don't don't lean too close. This is more just to show you the general outlay of the system that we've constructed to provide these instances. Uh, we, there's broadly two, two areas to these systems. You have the control plane on the left and the data planes on the right. The control plane is our world. This is where we manage uh, the instances for you. Uh, and this is all about control, consistency, knowing where everything is, knowing the versions of everything. And you can see that there's quite a few stages in the pipeline for these for the data that, about your clusters that we manage. Uh, you can also, if you if you squint and move your face a bit closer to the screen, you can see that we have an embedded red panda inside our control plane. Uh, the product's so good that we use it ourselves, right? Um, and this is an important aspect of how we built the system, so that we're users of it. We're, you know, we, we need it to work for our use cases, and that's how we helps us power it for your use cases. Uh, the elements around there really center uh, on that red panda as we push changes from the database into the into sort of right hand side of the control plane and these changes are generally driven by your cells uh, changing changing but selecting versions selecting cluster sizes things like that but similarly they'll that's where our changes will come as well as we manage the upgrades for your systems and the maintenance patches and as we push those automatically those will flow through these through these systems it all ends up in a temporal workflow management uh, instance, which is a classic multi-stage 
execution tool. So we have each each of our instances talk to Temporal over dedicated channels uh, and get the uh, actions that they need to take, generally revolving around those configuration changes and those updates. So they receive their actions from their Temporal server and then enact them. Those, those actions really uh, are taken in the data plane on the right, which I'll come on to now. This, this is zooming in now, and here you can see all the elements that we've got. This is a single instance of Red Panda, uh, and this is what you would be getting. Uh, and it's the same, it's the same diagram matches whether we're managing it in our, in our cloud account for you completely, or you've selected that you want it in your account in the BYOC product. Both are identical. Here you can see all the elements that come into make, bringing this thing to life. The main one on the left is the agent. This is our taker of actions within this singular instance, talking back to that temporal server that I was talking about a second ago. And this is where we really, it's really like a bootstrap kind of system. Uh, you know, it brings all of these things to life, a lot of Terraform, a lot of network configuration, bringing it all, all up, uh, up to the Kubernetes level so that we can then install our operator. The operator, uh, is then in charge of the actual Red Panda nodes. Uh, and this is where you know, instantiates them, manages the upgrades, uh, monitors them for health, deals with failovers, deals with the safety of the disks and the safety of your data, and all those things. That all goes into the operator set on top of Kubernetes. On the right, you can start to see us moving out into the connectors. So these are actually deployed on two separate uh, uh, node pools within the cluster. On the right, we have the the, the uh, fully managed connector instances, um, which then plug into Red Panda and ship off the, uh, the data wherever it is you've got it configured to go. And then most right, unusually, you can see another user diagram, which was initially over far on the left in the earlier slide. Uh, and this is the console access. So the console is actually running embedded within each instance. So you have a dedicated console for your instance of Red Panda. Each one has its own console. And then that is then pulled up into the main UI, as you'll see in a sec. That's what it all looks like underneath in abstract and um, architectural systems diagrams. Now I'm going to talk you through I'm going to give you a little look at what it really looks like and what you'll see when you're creating and managing your instances of Red Panda. Uh, here we have uh, the Red Panda Cloud UI. This is the topmost layer. Uh, this is where you do your cluster management and your network network management. So the network management is where you would configure your virtual private cloud, your VPC connections, go to networks, and then you can place clusters within uh, those networks. Uh, I've got one here that I've baked earlier, I'm gonna show you in a sec, but I'll just lead you quickly through how, what it's like to create a cluster in Red Panda Cloud. Here we have a tease for, an, for a product that will be coming to, to a cloud near you soon, which I'm sure will be discussed uh, at some point. Uh, but the main two choices we have now is this dedicated mode running in our account and the bring your own cloud mode. Uh, where you have more control. Keep things simpler for me. I'll just go this way. Here we have uh, the main choice is obviously to give your cluster a funny name. We've suggested a silly one here. Uh, I'd recommend if you're going to use, you know, if your production clusters include the name production, you know, just a suggestion. And then it's about selecting how much throughput you want for your cluster, the size of it. I say size, it's not so much about the size from your perspective. You just need to think about how much data you want to be pushing through this instance. And we'll handle the sizing and all the management of that behind the scenes. Let's choose my size, it's down to versions. Obviously, this is being recorded slightly before the GA, so we have some of our release candidate versions on display here. Um, and you'll notice that we've got some release candidates, uh, and when you, when you come to do this yourselves, these versions will have changed. So I'll select the latest version. And now I have a choice of cloud providers. So I've, I've, you've, told, you've told us what you want for your cluster, its size and its versioning. Now you can choose where you want it to be, AWS or in Google Cloud. Region selection, 
availability zones. You can at this point you can choose whether you want your uh, cluster to be in a single availability zone. As you saw in the earlier diagrams, we run three replicas of Red Panda uh, to give for failover. And if you want to take it to another level of failover safety, you can place each of those replicas in a dedicated, in a different availability zone within the cloud provider uh, to give you security against uh, availability zone failure. That's an, option, that's an option for you. Now we have the networking. And this really is about whether you want it public or private connected to your VPC peering. As I said, we'll be selecting the network thing there. So keep it simple, just keep public network. Now off it goes. It really is hands off from this point. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, we're working on that amount of time, but there's an enormous amount of stuff happening here. Network creation, cluster creation, account building. Then we've got to start the red pandas, build the connectors instances. All of this is churning away, but it's all just behind a little spinner uh, for you. As I said, I did bake one earlier, so we don't have to wait. After the wait is over, you come to see your cluster details. Now here, I've, I've selected into the uh, cluster. And so now really, I am looking at that console instance that is embedded within that Kafka cluster dedicated to your instance of Red Panda. So although it's it's completely seamless between the two, I've, I'm now actually looking at a completely, for me as a sort of old back-end engineer, I'm looking at a completely different thing. <clears throat> so here we are, and I've, I've zoomed into the uh, console of the cluster that I created earlier. This here is now really looking at a different system in my terms. And I zoomed in on the console that is dedicated to that cluster that I created uh, earlier in the day. And here, th there's loads of details about your cluster. We've got some high-level metrics, just calling out some things that we that you of general interest. And we've got the details, uh, region, zones, all those things. That's all great, but really, really, what's of interest is how to connect and talk to your cluster in the various ways that you can. Here we have the URL for connecting to, for message uh, sending and receiving, some details about the certificates uh, and the management of them. Schema registry, similarly as easily available as HTTPS endpoint. Simplified proxy for communicating with your cluster. And then a Prometheus endpoint where you can poll for metrics so that you can pull the metrics about how, uh, about how your cluster is doing into your own <clears throat> monitoring systems. We have more details available here. If you're not if you're not running your own monitoring, but you still want to get an idea over time, uh, we we have some metrics surfacing here about your cluster. And then we have a this is we have the topic creation uh, working all the way down through the areas that we'll talk about later into the into the connectors zone. Uh, so this is where you can create those connectors. There's a few available now, S3 Sync, Google, Google Storage Sync, and the uh, Mirror Maker connectors. And these are just a few clicks away. So we can just click through, set up these, set up these connectors, and we'll spin them up in the background and start pumping the data wherever you need it to go. And here, this is where you'll be able to control uh, the version upgrades. Um, and there's lots more features to come here around scheduling on automation levels. And this is where they'll all be surfaced when they get developed. I'll just go back to the overview. OK. So all I wanted to show you, just a quick whiz through uh, what Cloud provides you and that's what i wanted to show you today as i said my name's tom these are my contact details uh, i've got to say that we're hiring if you want to come and join us working on the system bringing red, red panda to to people all around the world drop us a line get in touch and uh yeah it'd be great to have you thank you very much